In this video, I'll show you an easy way to blow background of an image that looks realistic and is non-destructive. I'll be using the latest version of Adobe Photoshop for this tutorial, but you can do the same with any version that has the Select Subject feature. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to remove the background from my main subject. The reason that you want to do that is to avoid edge halos or ghosting when blurring the image. And it also gives you more flexibility when you're masking your foreground element. You'll see what I mean shortly. I'll start by duplicating my background layer. I will rename this layer foreground. But first we need to create a selection out of the main subject. I'll do that by navigating to the toolbar and choosing the Select tool. Then I will click on Select Subject. This will prompt Adobe Photoshop's artificial intelligence to find the main subject in your photo and select it. Now that our subject has been selected, we will need to extract it from the background. And the best way to do this is by expanding the selection, which will eliminate any outlines from appearing after the subject has been fully removed. I'll get to the Select menu and choose Modify, and then the Expand option. In the Expand dialog, you can enter the number of pixels to expand the selection. I'll be using 12 pixels for this image. So let's zoom in to take a closer look. Make sure that you have a decent gap that looks just like this between the selection and the edge of the main subject. Now that we have the gap, we can remove the subject by going into Edit, Content Aware Fill. Photoshop will now work its magic by sampling the areas that you see highlighted in green, which will be used to replace the subject. Don't worry if it doesn't look perfect or realistic at this moment, as most of it will be covered once we place our subject back, which you will see in the next step. And the most important thing at this point right now is that the edges are completely gone. Once you're happy with how it looks, go to Output 2, make sure that it's set to Duplicate Layer, and press OK. We now have a new background layer with the subject removed. I will rename this layer Blurred Background, because that's where we're going to blur the background. The next step is to enable the foreground layer and disable the two background layers. Then since the selection is still active, we can apply it as a layer mask to the foreground layer. We can do that by clicking on the layer mask icon with the layer selected. But as you can see, we now have a border around our subject from expanding it in the earlier steps. So what we need to do is to remove that border. And we will do that by going into Filter, Other, and Minimum. This filter will contract the mask by the radius number you input. And since I used 12 pixels when I expanded the mask in the earlier step, I will need to change the radius to 12 to remove this outline. And in this case, it works perfectly by removing edge halos and fringing, mostly around the round edges. But as you can see, it didn't do a very good job around the hair. But we can easily fix this issue by repainting hair strands in this area. And we're going to have to create a new layer for this. I will show you how to do this shortly. So the next step is to blur the background. I'll do that by revealing the blurred background layer and selecting it. But before we do that, we need to convert our layer into a smart object. Now go to the filter menu and select Convert to Smart Filters option. This will allow us to perform non-destructive edits as we can always come back and edit these adjustments. Then I'm going to go to Filter, Blur Gallery, and select Tilt Shift. So now you can adjust these controls to get the desired blur for your image. And once you are happy with the result, you can click OK. So now the next step is to refine the hair areas as Photoshop did not do a good job in masking it. But first, we need to select the foreground layer and then click on the layer mask. I'll zoom in so that you can see where the selection wasn't accurate. This can be easily fixed by selecting the brush tool. I'll keep the opacity at 100% and the flow at 20%. Making sure that my brush is on black, I'm now going to brush over the areas that are unwanted. Gently going over the edges to smooth it out. 
This might take a while to fine tune, but it is very crucial as this part will prepare us for our next step, which is painting her strands to make our image look more realistic. If you accidentally remove parts of the mask and wish to bring it back, you can simply switch to painting with white. Black will hide the areas of the layer, whereas white will reveal them. And a quick way to switch between the two brushes, the black and white, is by clicking on the X key. So now that I've masked out all the unwanted areas, I can move into my next step, which is to create a new layer on top of the foreground layer. And I'll rename it Hair Strands. And this is where I'm going to paint flyaway hairs on the model to make it look so realistic. I'll be using my Wacom pen and tablet to paint in the hair strands. With my brush tool still selected, I'm going to go in and change the size to 1 pixel and the hardness to 0. And now I'm going to paint in the hair strands. Using the eyedropper tool, I'll sample hair colour from nearby areas to closely match it. I do that by holding Alt on Windows, Option on Mac. This will temporarily enable the eyedropper tool and it just makes it faster and easier to work with. And I'll continuously do that as I am painting the strands. This step will also take a bit of time to complete, but I promise you that the final result will look great, as it will give the illusion that those flyaway hairs were originally part of the model's hair and not in fact painted. Okay, so now that we've finished painting the hair strands and flyaways, let's compare that to the original image. I'll turn off the hair strands layer just to see what it looked like before, and it definitely makes a huge difference. I'm very happy with the way it looks. So before we finish, let's make any final adjustments if needed. In this case, I'm going to add a hue and saturation layer just to give the image a bit of warmth. And I'll also add a levels adjustment layer to enhance the overall contrast. And let's look at the image before adding the adjustment layers and after. It definitely makes it look much better. So I'm going to go back to my blurred background layer, double click on blur gallery and readjust the blur effect. Let's take a look at the image before we added the blur effect. It makes such a big difference, doesn't it? We have successfully created beautifully blurred background which draws attention to the main subject. The blur is so realistic and smooth, it almost looks like it was created with an expensive lens. There's no visible ghosting or halos on the edges. It looks so sharp and realistic. This is because we separated our subject from the background layer before adding the blur effect. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. Remember to practice and experiment with different settings to achieve the desired blur effect. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you've learned something, please make sure you click on the thumbs up button. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.